The tenant fixed all the repairs and moved out. I gave them back their security deposit and I moved on and we got a new tenant. That lease became discharged just like a purchase agreement or a listing contract. It, it can be discharged in the form of a completion. Now, unfortunately, sometimes it can di get discharged by a court under a breach of lease. A breach is where one party or the other violates whatever the lease stated each party to do. The most common violation that we all think about is that the tenant failed to pay their monthly obligation called a rent payment to the lessor and they breached the lease. And when you breach a lease, because it is a contract, if they don't agree, just like foreclosure, we have to go to court to get a judge to determine if the parties breach the lease. Now, if we both agree, once again, it's a contract, we both can agree that you breach the lease and you agree that we breach the lease, we terminate that contract peacefully, but that typically doesn't happen. There are two ways or two types of breach that we're going to discuss. The first one is called a suit for possession. And this means possession of my rights, not possession of the property because you want all the rights back. This is typically called the actual eviction an actual eviction. This is the lessor suing the lessee. All right. The lessor, landlord, suing the lessee, the tenant, because the tenant breached the lease. The most common one that everybody thinks about is the tenant didn't make their monthly rent payment. They can breach the lease in any other area. The example that I gave you earlier about where our tenant was actually grooming dogs in the garage, our uh, lease said only to be used as residential property. She breached that clause and potentially put me in jeopardy with zoning because she wasn't doing what the, it was zoned residential. She's running a business. So theoretically, I could have sued her for possession of all of my rights back, which would include her be leaving that property because she breached the lease. It could be any of those terms inside of the lease. You said and you what happens is they are given a writ of possession and then they must vacate the property. If they fail to vacate the property, then you got to go back and you have to get a constable to do it for you. We cannot self-help. We are not allowed to turn their electricity off. We are not allowed to take their front door off. We can't do it. We have to get the courts to do it for us. So if your tenant has failed or breached the lease, you can go to the court, get a suit of possession, and reclaim your rights, those reversionary interests now get moved forward and the judge will render them back to you today based upon his ruling. And one of those possessions is possession, actual possession, that would include, hey, leave the property, give it back to me. If they fail to leave, you can't go in and turn the electric off and go, hey, the judge said I get it. No, we can't self-help. You would have to go back to court and get the judge to order a uh, decree and the constable would then go down to the tenant and he would remove them. Under penalty of law, they can bring the sheriff in to arrest you and remove. I can't do that. Shauna, your mic's you, on. Got a question? Yeah, you mentioned something about um, 
zoning. So her having running a business in a residential area affects zoning because you can't do that. Will you, the uh, lease or be like penalized, or can you be like served a citation or something? Yes. Yes, you could be served a citation for violating zoning rules. You would be issued a cease and desist. They could it, issue you a fine. They could do all kinds of things. The point is, whatever they do, she was the cause of it because she breached the lease that said only to be used as a residence. She was violating that clause by doing something else, which could potentially have put me in danger. Now, we didn't okay. evict her. We just literally said, hey, you know, you can't do that. And she's like, oh, okay. Theoretically, she breached the lease. I could have went to court and said, hey, under the actual eviction, I want a possession, all my rights back. I want her out and all of that because she breached our agreement. Is that a little excessive for that? We thought it was at the time. And she was actually pretty good. She was paying rent. She took care of the lawn. She was a good tenant other than doing this one thing. And we went in and told her, said, hey, you can't do that. And if you continue, then we're going to have problems, all right? So we gave her a warning, and she she ceased. She actually opened a true business and, and made a good living, I guess. Probably, maybe still doing it. Who knows? Now, there is a second type of breach, and this is the tenant's remedy. The tenant can actually sue for what's called constructive eviction. Constructive. When Landlord sues for actual eviction. The tenant sues for what's called constructive eviction. Constructive eviction, think of it this way. The tenant has evicted themselves from the property, but here's the key. Because the landlord has failed to keep the property in a livable condition. The landlord has failed to keep the property in a habitable, i.e. livable condition. I had a tenant claim this in court one day. We got in front of the judge, and the first thing this girl said is, Your Honor, I want to claim constructive eviction. And I looked at her, I'm like, Chick, you can't even spell constructive eviction. Who have you been talking to? And the judge literally asked her one question. Are you still living in the house? And she said, yes, but we're trying to. And he said, stop. Denied. The key here is the house has to be unlivable. Like the furnace went out in July. Or, sorry, <laughs> that would make no sense. The furnace went out in January, there's no heat, and the landlord failed to fix it in a reasonable time. All right, the judge is always going to look at that. You can't claim, well, it went out Tuesday, we left Tuesday night, and claim constructive eviction. The judge is going to say, did you call the landlord? Did he even get a chance? Well, okay, let's change the story. Hey, it went out on the 1st of January. We called him four times. We've got proof. It never got fixed. On the 1st of February, we left. Okay, the judge is going to go, okay, I understand that. That might be a constructive eviction. He was given multiple chances, failed to ever fix it, and you moved out? Okay. So constructive eviction is the tenant's right, but in essence, think about it like they're just evicting themselves from the property. All right. Now, Indiana works under the Uniform Residential Landlord Act. I always forget the name of that. Uniform Residential Landlord and Tenant Act. This is a very pro tenant state, by the way. If you've ever thought about owning rental properties or you're renting a property now, this is state is very pro-tenant. And as we're sitting here in the middle of this COVID-19 issue, there has been statements made by the governor about tenants not being to be able to be evicted for not paying their lease. 
This is a prime example. So nowhere in that statement did it say that the owner of the property is not liable for not paying their mortgage payment. How do I pay my mortgage payment if you're not paying your rent? Well, the assumption is I'm an investor. Investors have money. You can cover this. So it is a very pro-tenant state. All right. I remember I was down in Center Township one day with a tenant. I went to court so many times in Center Township. I literally had my own parking spot. I would go down there. And I was in front of this judge and it was like December the 8th. And the judge found in my favor because they had not paid November or December's lease. And the judge found in my favor and she said, yes, I'm going to call for you to vacate the property and you have until January the 10th to vacate. And you know me being the nice, calm, keeled person, even keeled person that I am. I literally said, so I, I suppose, Your Honor, you're going to make my December mortgage payment. And she said, excuse me? And I said, oh, I, I just a question. You, you found in my favor, but you're giving them a month to move out. And she said, well, it's the holiday, Christmas. I don't evict people in the holidays. That's not right. And I said, okay. I am sure my lender doesn't really give a damn that it's Christmas. They still want the December month house payment. And all I ask is if you were going to make it since you gave them a month. And she literally said, Mr. Modulin, can you approach the bench? And as I start walking up there, she's like, Bela, come here. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. Uh, you're right. My bad. Because I know what the next statement she's going to make is handcuff this guy so i i literally start walking up and i she goes bailiff i'm like i'm done i'm out thank you i'll pay december have a good day so it is a uniform residential landlord tenant act it is a very pro-tenant legislation we cannot self-help we have to have the court do all of this for us even if you have the electricity in your name you can't turn it off on them you can't cut the water off I knew a guy that literally took the front door off of, uh, when I first started doing this way back in the mid nineties, the guy that kind of taught me, we went to a house, they were behind in the rent and he literally said, Hey, I'm going to take the front door home and plane it because it's not level. I will probably be back from tonight with the door. Next day they were gone. They moved out. And I'm like, dude, this is simple. Well, lo and behold, that I find out that is highly illegal and you can't do that kind of stuff. All right. Matter of fact, I now have it on a recording, but I'm assuming the statute of limitations is passed because it was like 92 or 93 when that happened. All right. So very pro tenant legislation they have that with respect to how we can enter, when we can enter. Uh, do we have to give notice as a landlord? Um, who maintains the property, that has to be all spelled out. And to what degree, like I said, if it's a light bulb, that may be you mowing the lawn, may be me fixing, or you fixing the roof, may be me. Mowing the lawn could be me too as a landlord, if you define it that way, all right? Leasing does involve the fair housing, and we are going to talk about the fair housing of all of the seven protected classes, and we're going to have a whole chapter of that, and I believe, that is uh, tomorrow's chapter uh, to discuss the fair housing. So as a landlord, because we're conveying rights, we still have to adhere to fair housing codes, which is really, if you think about it, just plain smart, all right? And I tell everybody, there's only one color I discriminate against. Everybody know what that is? Green. If you've got green, you're my client. If you don't have green, you're not. That's about the only thing that I base everything on. If you got money, I'll work with you. If you don't have money, uh, yeah, go talk to Tucker, all right? 
So tomorrow we'll do all the whole chapter about fair housing. But when you are leasing property, you still have fair housing issues and you still must maintain all of the regulations for that. At this point on chapter uh, 17 leases, I am complete. Uh, unless there are questions from you guys. Is everybody okay? Thumbs up? No? <laughs> You're debating which thumb to put up? Yeah, it could be two thumbs up, two thumbs up. All right. I am going to, at this time,